Welcome back guys. In this new video, we're going to take a look at calorimetry under constant volume. Now, first we're going to say that every object has its own heat capacity. And just remember, heat capacity uses a capital C. And this is just the amount of heat that's required to change an object's, an object's temperature by one Kelvin. Here we're just going to say heat capacity is simply heat over the change in temperature. So final minus initial. And we're going to say the units are usually in joules over kelvins or kilojoules over kelvin. Sometimes your professor may even do it over degrees Celsius. So just look to see what units do they want the answer to be in. That's what you always have to make sure so that you get the correct answer. Now, similar to heat capacity, there's another property. This property is known as specific heat capacity. And notice that this one is lowercase c. And this is the amount of heat that's required to change one gram of a substance by one Kelvin. So here we're just going to introduce the concept of mass. And mass here will be in grams. So it's similar to heat capacity, but more in depth where it talks about mass. Now what we're going to say here is, if we know the specific heat capacity of a substance, we can rearrange this formula here so that we can solve for the amount of heat absorbed or released. So if we want to rearrange this equation up here, so C equals Q over M times the change in temperature, just multiply both sides by mass times the change in temperature. And then you say that Q equals M cat. So just remember, Q equals M cat. Just treat the delta sign, the triangle, as an A. So that's an easy way for you to remember the equation, Q equals MCAT. This is the equation that we use anytime they give us specific heat capacity, and we know the change in temperature, and they give us the mass of an object. Now, based on the concepts we just looked at, let's take a look at this question here. It says, at constant volume, the heat of combustion of a particular compound is negative 4621.0 kilojoules per mole. We say when 2.319 grams of this compound, remember it has a molar mass that I give to you, was burned in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature of the calorimeter, including its contents, rose by 3.138 degrees Celsius. What is the heat capacity of the calorimeter in joules over Kelvin? Okay. First of all, this image that we have here is called a bomb calorimeter. It's a way of us actually figuring out how many, how much energy does an object contain in it. The way it works is we have our sample put inside of this small little bowl here, and that is placed inside of this water. This whole unit is referred to as a bomb. And what's going to happen is we're going to actually use these rods here, and we're going to send an electrical current, and it's actually going to cause this sample to explode inside of the bomb calorimeter. So that's why it's called the bomb calorimeter, because we actually cause the contents to explode. And when they explode, they're going to give off some heat. Now, there's a temperature in the water. This temperature is actually going to record how much the water temperature increases by. In that way, we can figure out how much heat did that sample release. And from that, we can figure out how many calories it has, how much heat it started with, we could find out a lot of information. This is the way they do certain food sciences to figure out the calories we have in food. They use similar techniques such as this. Now, we talked about joules as being the standard type of energy for heat. Well, remember, you could also have, instead of joules for Q, you could have kilojoules, but you could also have calories, large calories. These are the calories that you see in food, and kilowatt hours. So these are other units, energy conversion factors that we can use in place of joules for Q. Now, we're not going to work on converting from joules to um, calories or kilowatt hours. I just wanted to give you guys this table so that you can see all the different types of energy conversions that you should know for lecture. Now, let's take a look at this question. We want to calculate heat capacity. Remember, this is capital C. And so, heat capacity equals Q over the change in temperature. And what we need to realize here is we need to isolate joules. We need to find joules for Q 
and we need the temperature to be in Kelvin. We already have half of it right off the bat, the easy part. The easy part here is I told you that the temperature rolls by this much. 